years and two. Nineteen thirty-five. The Lions win the NFL championship. The Detroit Tigers take the World Series. The Red Wings bring home Lord Stanley's Cup. Joe Lewis begins his rise to world domination. This transforms the Motor City into Detroit, City of Champions. All righty. Anchors away, Detroit City of Champions, the podcast. I'm Jamie Flanagan. Charles Avison. Uh, one, I'll get it right one of these days. I swear to God, man. What? What you get? I left my email open and it dings saying, you're live on YouTube. And I get an oh. email and, uh, you know, it's, it's, a little uh, it's like that's... walking and chewing gum. I think you're the only one in the world that noticed that. Oh, Jamie. no. Everybody who has email goes, oh, is my email? What? Oh, what? Okay. What? I, don't... I didn't notice anything. I thought yeah. it was like the, the starting buzz. Yeah. The, starting, <laughs> the little beep to start the show or something like the yeah. on air signs on now. Or I don't think so. But uh, Detroit City of Champions the podcast talking about 1935 and things leading up to it. The magnificent year in Detroit sports. And we were talking, Garwood, we're deep into the waters, we're deep. man. Yeah, we're, 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 we're very uh, deep. We're, we're wading now. into the deep end yes. uh, of the story and of the Garwood story. And uh, last week we were talking about, man, him and his, his uh, mechanic, uh, they took a beaten. Well, the la- yeah, the last week's show was like just one of those. It's, it's one of those just pulse. I mean, it's one of the greatest stories in Detroit sports yeah. history. And the idea that um, that the you know, what was it? 13 days before the race starts, the boat, the boat explodes on the Detroit river, right? They just get these new engines installed, these brand new engines. And they, they've never ridden so fast. In Did they life. turn this into a graphic novel or something? Well, that's what we, that's, that's your cue to put up the graphic. Uh, yeah. Novel. So we actually have, yeah, so we talked strip. about that last time and they turned it into a, a graphic, a graphic novel. Yeah. I, I don't even have, I, I don't have the date or in nor, and I don't even have which comic this came out of. It wasn't its own. It wasn't its own like uh comic book, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it was featured. It was featured in some, I don't even know. I just got it off eBay a lot, like, uh, you know, a long time ago. But I actually say in the book, like undated and unknown, okay. um, you know, comic book that this came out of. Well, but it sharp, illustrates though. the panels of that story we talked about, where, you know, this is the night. This is that nineteen twenty twenty eight race, yeah. Where he's, you know, the the English are coming over. They're bringing the boat to Detroit for the first time. They've got this new Napier Lions engine, which is like you know the newest cutting edge engine, and it's and outdoes. You know, it's a thousand horsepower engine, and it's gonna, it's, it's better than what Gar Woods got. So well, he's got to tune it up. There's two really crazy parts of the story. One, the mechanic get his neck cut, gets and his, his jugular, his jugular cut. cut, and he's in the hospital, and he's like, "You cut your jugular? That's like all she Bad. wrote." They said the whole, the whole water around him was full of blood. So, and they even show that on the comic strip. They show so, Orlin Johnson, or yeah. his mechanic in the boat. And back then you had the driver, which was Garwood, and then you had the mechanic, which is Orlin Johnson. And they're like, "My God, Orlin's dead. The water's yeah. full of blood, and he's like, he's you know, his jugular slit, and he's just he's done." But the, so there's two parts of that. One, how badly Orlin was hurt. Yeah. And then the second part was they had another race to run. They needed these big engines, but they were at the bottom of the river. They're at the and bottom they, of the river. They had no no real idea exactly where they yeah. were. Uh, they they had to go on mission impossible. It was to, the search for the them. engines. Exactly. That that's that's the story. That's that's what I, that's before last episode. I said it was so fun. And if it was you so don't, fun. If this isn't one of the greatest stories you've ever heard with regards to Detroit sports. Then then I'm a liar and don't listen to any more episodes. That was a pretty bold thing. So if you're still listening to the show, it means that you believe that it was one of the best stories ever in Detroit sports history. So the graphic novel, if if you're if you're listening to the audio podcast, you do have to to take the time to go find either Facebook or YouTube. Uh, and find the video version of it because the the clips are in there, and uh, as we're talking through, I'm I'm putting up the three different pages, and it's just it's just so it it's and the, so cool, the, the yeah. little drawings are cool and everything. It's a, it's very uh, reminds me of the very Spider Man. Totally, things. Yeah, it's all um, illustrated. It's exactly yeah. it's like a nineteen. I would say I would say nineteen fifties. So you know, 19, you know, late nineteen forties, early nineteen fifties color panels. You yeah, know, it's 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 a. It's, very yeah, it's, cool it's a classic thing that they would have, you know, some kid, little kid would have read and reading the story about Garwood and how cool he was because he was such a legend. Yeah, they're doing comic strip pan. You know, they're doing it's and a that's not even a comic strip. It's like a great. Yeah, it's a graphic novel. And, and there's yeah. actually two more pages that I didn't include. We might actually bring I might actually bring those out for there's another little bit. It's a little bit generic. It's like Garwood won this race and he won this race okay. and he did this boat like it was a little it wasn't. This, but this story was the focal point of the of the of the of this you know story they're trying to i think the whole thing was five pages long 
Yeah, very cool. Is is very very cool. And and so the uh, such a such a, a dramatic event, it just played well for a, a graphic novel. Absolutely. And uh, so where are we going next? What's happening? Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, so are we lose somebody today. Well, should the, we brace the, ourselves? The, well, you should. The death. The, the the title of the episode today is "Death of a Speed Pioneer." Holy smoke! So uh, before we move any further. Uh, if you want people to know about the death of the speed pioneer, you need to 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 share this. Share this. Share take it. a minute right now to like the video. Like it. Right like now. it. Subscribe. Yeah. Collect. Cool. Whatever it might be. Wherever you're listening, we do appreciate you here with us. And then tell a couple of friends. That's uh, cool stuff. Yeah. So, all right. So as we have we shared, and we're gonna pass this on. What uh, what's happening? So so where we left off last week, we you know we left off with this incredible story again, mm -hmm. where they have to dredge these engines out of the bottom of Lake St. Clair. It's <laughs> crazy. And it's not like they just like, oh, there's the engines. Let's go get them. There was an oh, entire yeah. story like they had Packard at the, you know, the Packard plant had an entire you know, wing and... ready to go, just oh. dedicated just to the spot when they found the engines. Yeah. And then they had like the police escort ready to go to take them straight to Packard at a moment's notice. The, the builders are already been the boat. And then Orlin Johnson is actually gets out of the hospital and they like, you know, they drop him into the boat, like, in the, you know, like barely can get into the boat because he's so mangled up. But he's he's Gar, he's he's Garwood's mechanic. He's got to be there. You oh, know, good they, could, they couldn't find some other mechanic. They had to bring no. poor Orlin out of the hospital <laughs> you know, and lower him in with a you know, and they actually talk about you see the doctors they standing they, there smoking the cigar. I don't know if this is a good idea, but yeah. if you really want to take him, yeah, they, they actually said in that quote that they, they had to they had to lower him into the boat with like a good hoist. Lord. You know, they couldn't he couldn't get into by his own power. So you know, so the out of the Miss America six is born the Miss America seven, and they mm -hmm. win the, the you know the race is almost anticlimactic because they win the nineteen twenty eight you know Harmsworth Trophy. They beat you know uh, Joe Carstairs and that, and um. And so that so the, the next step is 1929. Carstairs uh, returns to Detroit to, uh, to with the when her with the new boat, the Estelle Four, once again challenging Garwood in 1929 for this uh, for the Harmsworth. And uh, and so so she comes to Detroit and uh, in the, on the second lap of the race, her she there's a a, a broken oil line in her boat, oh. um, and it and the boat basically dies out on the track. And so the race, once again, is, be, is a race between the Miss America seven and Garwood's newly built Miss America eight. OK. And so and so who do you think won won the race? Which, which one was uh, Gar driving again? <laughs> the, Miss America, <laughs> the Miss America eight. I which, bet you that's the one that won. <laughs> that's the one that won. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever boat he's driving is the one that wins. That's what's so crazy, you know. It gets it. So anyway, so yeah, the Miss America eight. The he new, ain't taking the dog for a walk. <laughs> no, he's prancing the pony. So, so yeah, that's so, what he's doing. So Gar, Gar wins in the Miss America eight. So he locks in the nineteen twenty nine uh, Harmsworth Trophy, which is now his fourth. So he's got five gold cups, uh, four Harmsworth trophies. There's just no. I mean, it, we we talked about a couple episodes ago how he's just in search of competition. He just, I mean, you know, and this is what, and this is where he's at. So because he's in search of competition, because he sees this, you know, this Estelle four breaks down and this and that. So Wood now is like, okay. So after this race is over, Wood invites car stairs and her entire engineering crew mm. to literally to go, to walk through his uh, boat building plant and like take notes, take oh. photos, look at everything he's doing because he wants to make it a race. He really wants to, wants to race. Not he by, not to... by dumbing it down, which yes. is what the gold cup people wanted. To exactly. Do. They're like, all right, let's he limit. He wants to bring people up. I he... want unlimited. Yeah. And that's why it was the unlimited. They were ultimately, yes. they were called the unlimited. The unlimited right? hydroplane. Yeah. Boats. Yeah. So... And it was like, you know, let's not dumb it down. Let's no. ramp this bad boy That's up. what's so cool is that this guy is a true sportsman. I right, mean, right. In every sense of the word, right, he's right. literally trying. There was a one race where he was against the French where he, he doesn't want to. He sent his engineers to help them try to get their boat up and running to try to race him. And they couldn't even his own engineers couldn't even get there. He doesn't want to. He doesn't run. want a ribbon for participating. No, absolutely not. So that's <laughs> what I mean. So he actually invites and actually have a little quotes, a little, a little one sentence quote where they asked him um, this is again, Jay Lee Barrett, Speedboat Kings. Um, and so he, they asked him why he's you know, why he let the, the you know, the, the, the competition check out his boat factory. Yeah. And he says, if they can build boats like mine. If, if they can build boats like mine, he said, we might have a good race someday. That's all I want. So he actually, he's seeking comedy. He's so dominant that he's telling everybody how to do his thing so that he can race him. Cause he like, it's, you know, he wants the competition. So, um, so that being said, so going forward, we're about to enter into the most, uh, 
he's about to get what he wants. Okay. He's about uh-huh. to get what he wants. The in, game is afoot. And more. All in, right. To a high level degree. Okay. And so, but in order to be really move on and before you can even begin talking about the rest of Garwood soil, we have to take a little bit. Uh, it's not a detour. It's totally, it's, it's a ma- it's a major component of the story, but we have to talk about somebody else. And so his, and so this, this man's name is uh, Sir Henry Seagrave. 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 Yes. And, and this is, I want to stop for a second real quick too, and say, this is one of the reasons why I'm so glad to be doing this show. Yeah. Because this guy, when I was reading about him and, you know, I did a whole section in the book about him. I mean, he's a, he's an essential part of the story. This guy is like one of like we talked about, you know, the, you know, Curtis aircraft engine, these guys, but this, but Sir, Sir Henry Seagrave is just one of the coolest people. Like, I mean, very few people, you know, maybe people in boating circles. It's not know Sir about Graves him. Ghastly. It's not that different. No, no. Yes. Seagraves. Yes. Different. Seagrave. Yes. All right. So, so this, where's he from? So he's, so, uh, he, so he's actually from America. He was born in America in okay. 1896, All right. but his family moved. Um, he was born in Baltimore, Maryland, but right. his, but he was, his mother was, his mother was American. His father was Irish huh? and the family actually moved back to Ireland. I'm liking him more by the minute. Yeah, so he went the other direction. <laughs> all these other immigrants are coming. In the oh, you're talking about like <laughs> Fair so point. all these immigrants are coming over here in the early 1900s. Right. They're they're going back. Yeah, that's around when my grandfather was coming in and out. Yeah, yeah so he's so he's actually going the other direction, Fair right? Yep. So so there's like you know the the boats coming from the Statue of Liberty. It's full of immigrants, and there's yeah, like yeah. the boats going back with like one immigrant. And it yeah, says yeah. His family. That's what it was around the time my grandfather he came here. He was born in 1882, something like that. 1888. So they came over. Oh, okay, they came over on those boats, and so. uh, he came over and he got really really sick. He might have been in Chicago, got really, really sick, and he went home. He went home to die. I got, Jeez. I got better. Really? <laughs> he, got, he got better. He, he recovered. Yeah. So he came back. Uh, and then he, grand, he married my grandmother here. Well, it's a good thing. You in wouldn't Detroit, be here. I'm in glad 19, he did. You wouldn't in 1922. Be here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So my grandmother and grandfather were like rocking around because they got married in 22. Okay. Uh, my dad, my mom, they were both born in 32. So they were infants, but their older siblings were about seven years old or 10 years older so they were they would have been like 10 years Straight old Ireland, when, huh? when this was happening my 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 grandmother she came in through i through canada so she was like her folks were from ireland lived in canada and then came to detroit my yeah. grandfather straight from my straight from the so island flanagan's not just a pretty pretty sounding name it's actually a literally irish yeah oh yeah no boat. that's it it's yeah my dad my dad ended spirit. up getting his irish passport i want to get my i want to get mine that's yeah, I, yeah I wanna dude, get why my, wouldn't you i want to get awesome. the irish passport since my dad got his now it maybe it was my grandfather my dad got his i can get mine yeah so yeah i want to have two passports get it I'm working what you on doing it. on this show talking to me for i know get your passport i know but seagraves born here yeah so he goes back to ireland Ireland. and so he's there so um so this is the generation all these people all these people that are born in like the very late 1800s these are all the people that are going to fight in world war one right 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 and so and so this is that gen i mean really a lot of the people we've talked about are all are have have world war one experience you know these are people that you know how the war impacted them you know potsy clark for the lions coach he was a you know he was in in france for that so there's you know there's um so anyways so this guy here however uh so um Seagrave is going to become a war hero and I'm just going to kind of walk through some of the stuff because this guy right like I say any anybody that has a, has a chance to really go look this guy up and spend some time mm-hmm. um it's just he's he's got a, an incredible story we're just going to kind of Is he revered anywhere like in Ireland oh, is he like uh, Oh big time. Okay fair play. Yeah but All like right. I, like I don't know if a lot of people know his name now necessarily right, right. but in his day he was one of the most famous people in England. Okay. He was one of the most famous people. One of the most famous people in England. Was he? Was he prominent in England or in Ireland or both? England. Um, okay. Because he like he's, because, yeah, England primarily. Um, so I, maybe Ireland too. I'm not sure. But he kind of he at one point he moved to England. But I saw when I was getting the slides ready for today, there was like one of those blue circles that said uh, Sir Henry Seagrave lived here for okay. like for like four years. Like lived in flat number eight. You know, one of those things like a historical marker that had on the side of a building that says. You know, Sir Henry Seagrave spent four years in this flat. You know what I mean? That's yeah, that's yeah. like okay. words of historical significance yeah. for like a in you know like a four year stretch of his life lived in this place, and it's on the historic like the English historical like tour. You know what I mean? Like where it's you I mean it's an official place that you're not allowed to damage. You know what I mean? Like that's that kind of he had that kind of a, a you know a, 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 at least in his day he was you know he was one of the most famous, and so 
so they so so a little bit of a rundown for his like world war one career so he goes to eaton college and then sandhurst military academy um entered world war one like right off the bat fort 1914 as an infantry lieutenant uh -huh. And so, and so in uh, in May nineteen uh, May of nineteen fifteen, um, in a in he's he's uh really badly injured in hand to hand combat, and he's so he's dragged off the battlefield in critical condition. Mm. Okay, so he and so um so he returns to war the very next year, but this time he's in the British Air Service because that dragged on. Yeah, oh, yeah for well, four years. Yeah. yeah, so he returned to war the very next year in the British Air Service. So within two months, he's promoted to captain and wing commander after downing four enemy planes. And so, in, and then, the, so in in uh, April of 1916, he is he's shot down, found unconscious in a mangled tree, recovered, and then returned back to the war. So this guy is like, I mean, he's you know he starts off on the ground and in the trenches, injured, wounded, comes back in the air, and then you know <laughs> gets promoted to the ranks, and then. Uh, get shot down again like you know what i mean like this he's just he's 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 there you know he's in france he's you know he's fighting so um so just across this you know you know across this time period he just you know makes a name for himself as this guy who's you know a warrior you know he's in the air he's you know doing all this so um so anyways it's really after the war that he begins to really make a name for some because so post-war he begins to drive. It's like, I don't know how you get this job, but his, <laughs> he gets a drive driving, driving, he gets a job driving experimental cars for a British company called Sunbeam. Okay. So he's a s experimental car driver. Not, <laughs> like, not, not big into blenders. It's no, different, different yeah. Sunbeam. It might be the same Irons, company. Well, it might be blenders. Same, Sunbeam might be the same company now. Could, they may have, yeah. they may have evolved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but back in this day, he's driving it. He's like, yeah, experimental I heard, cars. I hear, I hear you got a, a help wanted poser for an experimental experimental car driver grabbing you know? the sign out of the window but you can see how his track record in the war yeah. suits that sure you know it's not like he was just kind of a random guy and just yeah. did whatever and then not ignore you know he's you know he's getting shot down he's you know he's like this guy's um you know he, he, that job totally suits him so um so anyways so he, so he's experimental car driver for sunbeam and so in 1923 you can throw a couple of, yeah there you got a perfect yep. perfect time so you got these. So in 1923, he he uh, using these experimental cars, he wins the French Grand Prix, mm -hmm. and then in 1924, he wins the San Sebastian Grand Prix, which is a Spanish Grand Prix, and then in 1926, um, March 21st, he sets the land speed record in a in a Sunbeam Tiger. The car is called the Ladybird, and he sets the land speed record for with 152.33 miles per hour. 1927 <clears throat> he becomes the first human being to travel at 200 miles an hour how many miles per hour 200 200 first human being to ever travel 200 miles per hour all right because yeah. those first land speed records were set here uh, in detroit this is exactly this is in daytona this is daytona all right and then because they once, drive it on the on the sands the yeah. hard packed sand yep so they started here in detroit on the frozen frozen river henry ford set one himself yeah I think it was like 65 or 95 miles an hour, something like I heard that, that too, in 1907 yeah. or something. And then, uh, yeah, then they moved to Florida on the hard sand and then to the desert after that when they were driving the supersonic crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. But, uh, so this was old. He's the first, worst, first person to break first 200, person to break 200 in first, Daytona. The first. Yeah, I think being. I was yeah. I think I was running 200 miles an hour from the cops on spring break yeah. in Daytona. Yeah, but that's a go. different that's a different story. Following in the path of Seagrave. <laughs> so so he's so this 200 mile, the miles per hour in the sunbeam. The cutter is called the mystery. And so he sets the he sets the world record, just the like the all time world record, 203.79 miles per hour on Daytona Beach, nice. uh, Florida. And so, and so 1929, so basically like two years later, a year and a half later, he's back to Daytona beach and he crushes his own speed record, 231.45 miles an hour. How many years later? Just a two years later, two years this later is right. 1929. These, these numbers are jumping. So man. just as Gar Wood and the same year that Gar Wood is beating car stairs for sure. his, for his fourth Harmsworth. Yeah. Um, uh, Seagrave is setting the is just crushing these records 231.45. <clears throat> That's one of the slides we have here. You can actually see it with the with that the, the car, um, yeah. you know, with this car that he's got. Um, and so and so this uh so he, at this point in time 231. That's a cover of uh yeah. or that's a poster, it's just this like yellow a promo car, poster, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's this sunbeam, it's like that's the, cool, it's the coolest car, yeah. 
I literally almost look like a concept. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's yeah. it's got the fins, but two hundred and three. I mean, it, so think about it. Back then, this car is uh, this is this is spaceman movie stuff. And that's what I'm trying to say. This is nineteen. This is nineteen twenty nine. People are like, nah, 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 yeah, nah. This, People that haven't seen the pictures or or uh, you know a video clip or a movie clip of it, uh, the newsreel clip of it, they're like, nah, 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 not happening. Yeah, they're not. They're not. So that so that, it's so that car that car that is called the Golden Arrow. The Golden and it's Arrow. Still, it's still you know it's still in existence. You can still see it. Really? Yeah. I, Wait, I, you I, know I, for, I forgot where it's at, but All you right, can I'm actually gonna... see it online. There's actually okay. pictures of it. But the cool thing is, you, you hit the nail right on the head. It's it's people like this. It's illustrations like this that are that that create this sense of. And this is 1929. That the that like it's futuristic. Yeah. Like the world is like the technology improvements are so rapid. Like we're looking at like the you know the internet and stuff going. Oh my god, the technology is advancing so fast. Well, yeah. the same thing. These people were thinking the same thing. Like yeah. man, you know, two years ago they you know the first person to break two hundred miles an hour. Now he's crushing it at two thirty one yeah. in a car that looks like. You know, this thing is, I mean, look at the picture of it. You know, this thing is headed to the moon or something. You no, know? it is. It's, it's an incredibly cool, um, you know, illustration of this thing. And, 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 but this is the kind of stuff that's, that's lighting the imagination of, of people. It's Seagrave. It's Gar yeah. Wood racing right. a train. It's these people that are breaking, you know, that are, you know, breaking the barriers or pushing the barriers of what's possible that's creating the you know the dreams of especially the youth uh -huh. especially the youth they're seeing the kids are seeing this and they're young in their childhood and being in their imaginations are growing going man where are we going to be in 30 years or that, whatever you know that 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 abstract drawing yeah it's like but compared to the real one it's like look at that thing it's like crazy yeah. it's like i think the the actual because this is a uh, if if you're listening to the audio podcast again, this it's like is like the Batman. This is this is a day. Yeah, this yeah. is a day to go and find that video. Totally, because this is this drawing. The drawing doesn't do this justice. Yeah, this thing is futuristic. It's it, the it, golden arrow, man. It it's, is. It's so that cool. is. I gotta figure out. That's. I mean, it's like a gold Batmobile, and it's is, real. Like they, it wasn't just a film prop. This guy pushed this thing to 231 miles an hour in the sands of Daytona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so. And that's, that's what I'm saying, but this is the kind of stuff that's firing people's imaginations yeah. that like the future is going to be crazy. It's yeah. going to be like, you know, we could go to the moon one day, you know, yeah. I mean, it's 30 years later, whatever we're going to 40 years later, we're going to the moon. Oh, yeah. That so, the drawing on that poster barely barely does it justice. Yeah, I mean the and the picture is awesome. That's where yeah. you think that's your point. And then that, I found it. I'm like, holy crap! This is like, even cooler <laughs> it's, than it's the... even cooler than the illustration, which is trying to like you know it's trying to make it even make it look cool. And right, it's, right. It, the, the real thing is even cooler. It's a, it's amazing. And they, if you Google it, there there's breakdowns and they have the engine torn apart. Yeah, the they have the, the chassis off. Look it up. Golden there's a, there's some neat things to see on yeah. on that. So. So the, 231. Seagrave. So Seagrave pushes this thing 200. So at the same time, you know, right, right thereabouts at the same time that Garwood wins his fourth. Seagrave ever get in the water? So this is, it's funny you should ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very excellent question. So on the same boat, on the same boat that is that um that was not planned either no it wasn't we're, we're in sync. I just want to know. know I just yeah, want to no. know. Did he ever get in the water? Absolutely. So so here's the thing. So I'll, I'll, before I say anything, so yeah. so here's the thing. So at this moment that Seagrave is doing this, Seagrave is an international hero. Yeah. First human to go 200 miles sure. an hour. Yeah. Then the next year he crushes it at 231, right? This is British engineering. This yeah. is British cars doing it on Daytona Beach, Florida. And, 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 then, and then you have this thing with like these, na the national pride that's and you're your, just you're just coming out of world taking the War words one. out of my mouth he's the pride of britain i actually right. have it written right here in my notes the pride of britain so and right it, it is it's a thing it's it's because you know you're coming out of these war situations mm -hmm. you know and and people are struggling to 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 cuz i mean it's you a know, new well, it's a new world the war's over everybody's turned the page everybody's looking towards the future right, a lot of people are jacked up from the mustard gas and then true cities were yes. just bombed out true and people are looking for things to motivate them and be excited yeah about. but people are also kind of looking to i mean they're they're not trying to forget the war but they're but it's like it's almost why like, are we proud this? about ourselves because we, yes. we even though we won we got our butts handed to us while winning well true uh, but they're looking but now it's like that was yeah. you know the world war one was called the war to end all wars yeah. world war one world war two had not happened that yet. were true hitler yeah. was not you know hitler was nowhere even near been near no. taking power in anything no. so world war two was not even at this point world war you know as we start to get into the 30s yeah. yes but in 29 right 
the world war ii was the furthest thing away so now for these people like the future is what is is could is wide open you know like the war to end all wars has happened the future is wide open you've got you know but like i say here we go with seagrave as a national hero go and in fact he's in florida garwood spent a ton of time in florida he got you know acquainted with he got to know seagrave because garwood's is the speed on water you know right. so so but here's the thing that 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 right there is an important concept so seagrave is the is the the master of speed on land garwood is the master of speed on water but the british also had what's called the what was called the schneider cup okay and there was a british company called supermarine mm -hmm. and there's, uh, people may be familiar with that name because of the the plane which is one of the most iconic planes in the history of of just planes which is called the supermarine spitfire and that was one of the planes um one of the planes that uh, won the won world war ii the battle of britain it's just absolutely a legendary uh, and one you know it, it wasn't the plane but it was one of the you know planes that um that won this that won, you know won the war it's just but it's just been like one of the most iconic planes of all time is the mm -hmm. supermarine spitfire and so after the war supermarine is still making engines and there are still making planes and so the british had the had a firm grip on the schneider the schneider cup which was that basically it's a, it was the harmsworth trophy of air of the air you see what i'm saying like you had to have the best plane and it'd be yeah. the most maneuverable and longest distance and all these different things and so and so the british had so in essence the british were were, were the masters of the of the of the land and air and of, and they needed and, and all that was needed all that was needed was to be master of the air sea and land was to beat gar wood right yeah right so and they would and they'd be you know and, and especially the the you know the british for the trifecta in the british have long since had this identity as one of the greatest sea powers you know in in history and so and so that would for them not to avail i mean if they were to throw the other two in and trade for the, the masters of the sea they would probably do that you know it, it was almost like an insult that they weren't masters of the sea and mm -hmm. you know the, the harmsworth trophy wasn't their you know personal possession and so it's so sea great so so anyways on the same boat as that the the golden arrow was coming to daytona beach on that exact boat, like on the shipping container that brought that golden arrow over, was also uh, a a new boat built by the British called the Miss England One. Ooh, yeah. So Gar Woods on his Miss America Seven, Miss America Eight, and coming over on this same boat with with Seagrave is the Miss is the Miss England One. Okay, so 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 this boat is in the advertisement that we showed here with this golden arrow. If you look small, look if you look close on the on the bow or on the uh, illustration, this advertisement you you can actually see Wakefield uh, uh, castor oil. Okay, yeah. So yep. so Wakefield was an oil a British oil tycoon, and he was using this advertisement to market this uh, you know castor. I'm sorry, castor oil. Uh -huh. And so um so he's an oil so he, like I say he's this oil t uh, tycoon, and so he's got as deep a pockets as a person can have. <laughs> yeah. yeah right he thought the uh the hydraulic lift guy had some money yeah 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 so he's got this is as, <laughs> this is as, as deep a pocket as you can get yeah so now the british are masters of the, masters of the air and masters of land as far as speed and tra championships in this mm -hmm. and so now so, so wakefield as this oil tycoon he wants the he is a proud british man and it, he wants the he wants the harm's worth right and so they so it's so over this course so that so he brings this miss america one boat over here mm -hmm. right and this boat is um it, yeah so that, so anyways it, this so it, in 1929 the same year that garwood wins his heart wins his harmsworth there they uh there's a, a a race in florida at the same point called the called the miami regatta okay okay and so it's so seagrave gets in the boat for the miami regatta uh, and he beats garwood oh that doesn't happen very the, often it never happened <laughs> never in the miss garwood Gar's like Rrr. so garwood's driving the miss america seven right. not the eight he's got the seven and miss england one beats the miss america seven uh, right in a straight up race like the miss america doesn't break down or doesn't do anything this is a race game it's on a, the news is flashed across the world. Garwood's like shaking yes. the dust off the his master, shoulders. Says, Game on, exactly. Man. The master of you know the this 231 mile an hour on land, man, Seagrave beats Garwood. No, nope. right. And this is not for the Harmsworth, but it's the Miami Regatta, right? Right, right. And so, um, and so Gar, so Gar, so Wood actually far from being disappointed. Sure, Wood is actually happy yeah. because he's he, because he's in so competition, competition. 
And he's got this, you know, Seagrave, who's like this speed merchant. And they've got the Wakefield, the money man. And so now he's like, well, I got to foster this competition. So what he does is um, to foster, to stoke this. So uh, Seagrave and Miss America, Miss England one is scheduled to race in the Venice regatta in Italy um, for a trophy called the uh, Count Volpe cup is a, in, in Italy, a very prestigious cup, you know, in the, you know, Italy in that. Okay. So anyways, so Garwood sends the Miss America five and the Miss America seven to race the Miss England one in the vine. He, he doesn't bring the Miss America eight, right? He doesn't bring, he doesn't hold, he doesn't, oh, yeah, he doesn't yeah. bring the eight. This <laughs> is top of the line boat. So he's, so he's bringing, he's kind of sending his two a little bit weaker boats because he doesn't necessarily want to win. Sure. Right. But he's, but he's not going to pilot the boats and he's not even going to make the trip. Which one do he send? He sends the five and the seven. The five and the seven. So the oh, seven's the, the one six. that was, you know, the, the boat, you know, the, the engine. He just the, got beat. So the, well, yeah. yes. So here's the thing. So the, so the engine from, remember the, the story with the engine from the six became the Miss America seven to right. beat car stairs. And so the five, so it's the five and the seven yeah. that are um, okay. brought over. And so the seven having, you know, was, you know, in this race, for, you know, had just won this, or it just lost this race uh in in miami and so mm -hmm. they in, so by all accounts the, the boat had been sort of beat up and they didn't even really repair it yeah because this, the race happens in the same year it's almost like they packed up the boat they sent it to venice right after the miami race so they hadn't even really repaired it so i'm going to read a quote of the race from 1929 it's a tremendous story it's a tremendous story and there's no way I could do anywhere near the justice that uh, Speedboat Kings, Speedboat, totally. Yeah, Speedboat Kings. Uh, there's no way I can do justice like Jay Lee Barrett. Like yeah, <laughs> if I had a hundred golden uh, tongues and I, you know, spoke for a hundred years, I'd not yeah. be able to speak as well as Jay Lee Barrett can write. So, and what boat is this? The so, uh, England one, two, so or? Miss England one, right. piloted by Seagrave. Right. And there's and Garwood is sending the five and the seven right, over right. to race in this Venice regatta. And so he Garwood knows he's kind of sending like a handicap because he himself is not going. Yeah. And he's not sending his best boat. But so he's almost like sending boats Testing over the water. The, well, he's the... sending some boats over to give Seagrave Beat them up a little bit before he's got to put the big dog out there. He, I think that he kind of hopes that Seagrave's going to win again yeah. to stoke the fervor further sure. to get the interest up so that there's a harm's worth challenge that sure. he can once again defend. I mean, we've, that's this is the theme is that Garwood is trying to stoke the competition and you're not going to stoke competition by being so dominant that nobody has a chance. Right. So he wants to make them people think that there's a chance, right? <laughs> that's how, rope a dope. That's rope a dope. That's how good he is. It is rope a dope. So I mean, it's not really he's a rope. We just, I don't he's know. Trying I'm making, to, I don't even no, know what that means. Rope a dope is being defensive. Like Muhammad. Ali. Okay. Like I don't know. I don't boxing know. stance. No, this he's trying. Sounded good. It's, no. So he's, <laughs> so he's trying to encourage, he's trying to encourage the competition. <laughs> So he's so a better thing is really a, another way to put it is <laughs> is that he's he's kind of like hamstringing himself. Right. It's like a runner at a race that's okay. like you know running with like ten pound shoes because he wants the, the little kid to win and bolster his confidence. You know what I mean or something <laughs> like that. So it's so that's that's more akin to what it is. He's trying to build the confidence of these people so that they will actually bring a legit challenge. All right. So anyway, so I'm gonna read. So what the does quote. Barrett say about so this? So this so so this is the race. It's the Miss America one versus I'm, I'm sorry, Miss England one versus the Miss America five and seven in Italy for the Count Volpe cup right. in the Venice regatta in 1929. All right. So, um, and so as we said, the Miss America seven was a little bit beat up when they got it over there. Cause mm -hmm. it, it already, it take a little bit of a pounding in the, uh, in that, in that Miami regatta. <laughs> so, so here's the quote. So here's the quote right here. So Orland Johnson, Phil Wood and Vance Smith were already in Venice with the Miss America five when the broken boat, i.e. the Miss America seven, uh, had arrived so it, let me just start over again so because i actually have like this little sure. parentheses in here which kind of threw me off there orland johnson phil wood and vance smith were already in venice with the miss america five when the broken bolt arrived they saw immediately that it could never stand the jarring of a fast race but they had special orders from wood phil wood said it'll sound silly to all america if we don't put up some kind of a race so phil wood and orland johnson drove the broken bolt Prince Carlo Rispoli, a son-in-law of Count Volpe and vice chairman of the regatta committee, piloted Miss America 5 with Vance Smith at the throttles. They, both American boats, had just started for the line 200 yards back when the gun blasted the signal. They had made a mistake in their time. Sir Henry Seagrave had beaten them across. Vance Smith, engineering the fifth, i.e. the Miss America 5, pulled, up, pulled out the throttles. 
But before he could get any speed, the seventh thundered past like a bullet in a mad dash after Seagrave and the Miss, Miss England won. Vance could see Phil Wood and Johnson closing in on Seagrave. Then, suddenly, for no apparent reason, the seventh shot about 12 feet into the air. Phil Wood and Johnson were pitched out of the cockpit. Out of the cockpit. With, when, two, when the two white figures hit the water, they were 100 feet apart. The seventh kept going in a great white arc to the right, finally burying itself on the shore. It was destroyed. But Vance acted fast, throttled down the engines of the fifth, and Prince Carlo Rispoli, driving, pulled up beside Johnson, floating on the surface. Johnson's head was thrown back. His mouth and eyes were open like a dead man. Vance, Vance made one desperate leap. He took Johnson by the hair and lifted him out of the water with the strength of a crazed man, dragged the body over the hot engines and started to administer artificial respiration. At the dock, the Italian doctors pronounced Johnson dead. Oh. But Vance kept working on him desperately. I know you're not dead, Orlin. I know it, he kept saying. I don't believe them. The water kept pouring out of Johnson's mouth. Vance kept at him. They were in a speedboat now, racing racing to the Maritime Hospital at Santa Ana. V Vance Smith didn't even remember how they got there. For 20 minutes in that mad, bounding dash to the hospital, Vance kept working on his man. He began to believe Johnson really was dead. But just as their boat pulled up at the dock, Johnson let out a gasp. He was breathing. He was alive. Alive. That gasp, Jan Vance said, it was the sweetest sound I ever heard in my life. Orlin Johnson lived but his skull was fractured. Sir Henry Seagrave won the race. Oh, so the second time in a row within a year, Orland Johnson is, they pronounced him dead on shore or on, uh, on the boat. They pronounced him dead. They said, he was, listen, I'm going to read it one more time. This was the, like the dramatic pause. He took Johnson by the hair and lifted him out of the water with the strength of a crazy man. He pulled Orland out of the water by his hair into the boat. And with the strength of a crazed man, he was using adrenaline, dragged a full grown man out of the water by his hair, uh, dragged him over the hot engines and started to administer, you know, artificial CPR, yeah. CPR at the dock. The Italian doctors pronounced Johnson dead. Jeez. The doctors pronounced him dead on the CPR back dock. then. It was really just like pumping their arms up and down. Well, though, I think whatever it was at work, because they saved him, <laughs> but they're sitting there. But they were like, he's dead. Oh, my God. What are you God. trying to do? <laughs> what do you do is stop pumping them arms up and so down. So a year I'm prior. Not done yet. Slit throat. So a year prior, Orland Johnson gets his jugular vein split and his you know, slit in his throat by is a board. His, is this his last race? The very next year. No, this is Orland Johnson. This is his mechanic. Oh, you my know, God. This he keeps is going? Garwood's personal mechanic. He keeps going. Well, I don't want to give away what's going on in the story, but yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, this is not his last he's race. He's not gonna let a no. He's not gonna a let a little him. thing like dying on the water <laughs> slow him down. Ah. He's not gonna a little thing like his like getting his throat slit by a board in one year. The very next year, he you know gets pitched a hundred yards out of the hundred feet off of a boat, and you know, uh, you know, uh, gets pronounced dead by Italian doctors. Oh, good he's lord! He's not gonna let these kind of little things get in the way keep of, you down of Garwood's supremacy of speed <laughs> out the water. You know what I mean? Like this is, but these are the people we're talking about. Oh. See, so yeah, so like this is so, and this is just the you know, this is the it, you know, this it, it, Venice regatta. You know what I mean? So Seagrave wins the race. So once again. Word is, you know, Garwood's boats, and maybe not Garwood in the flesh, but Garwood's been beaten. So this is this race is what leads um, uh, Seagrave and Wakefield to announce their challenge for yeah. the 1930 Harmsworth. You see, so now the now that the, you know the gauntlet's thrown down, the 1930 Harmsworth is on. So and so at this point, this is where the things really start to take a turn, right? For like the phenomenal for this Garwood story. Because now the the British Air Ministry gets involved with this. Okay. So now they've got the the power of the British Air Ministry, and they're working with Rolls Royce, and they develop a whole new engine. This we we were talking previously about this Napier Lions engine, which yeah. is a two thousand horsepower. Now they got a roll roll. It was a thousand horsepower, and Garwood had these you know these new engines that you know that you know these that, uh, Packards that were doing a thousand horsepower in that. Now this Rolls Royce engine developed developed in conjunction with the British Air Ministry and the Rolls Royce. These things are two thousand pound horsepower engines. Yeah. Each of these engines has double the horsepower of every engine that Garwood has. 
And so the so the so a new boat is built with these with two of these engines, the Miss America, or I'm sorry, the said Miss England two. The Miss England two is born with yeah. two of these two thousand pound horsepower, two thousand horsepower engines installed, right? So two of these engines equals all four of Gar, you know, these two, of these engines, these two engines that Garwood's got, right? So it's so it's it's a whole not this is a whole new. And it's all a game, game of weight and power. It's all a game of weight and power, weight and power, weight power and yes. size, and yeah, in yeah. the in the you know and how how it can move through the water, the friction on the water too. So, uh, so anyways, yeah, you got the seven of you. So we got the a picture of the Miss England too. Yep. Oh yeah. <clears throat> it's Miss England too. All right. Yeah. So, so the Miss England, so I the, missed my cue. So, damn it. Well, so the, you know, so the race we were just talking about where, where Gar is racing him in Miami and he also racing him in Venice. Right. He's going against the Miss England one. Right. Right. But now with these, you know, now they've got these now 2, they got this monster inside this one. Yeah. 2000 horsepower. Miss yeah, England too. Here's, here's what you, you know what they don't have. They don't have Gar Wood behind the wheel. That's true. They don't have, but they got or Seagrave. But they got Seagrave. Uh, well, all right, I give you, I give you a little bit of Seagrave. Seagrave's awesome. I'll take Gar Wood over Seagrave. Well, I mean, I mean, the water probably me too. Me too. But, <laughs> but, but they, at this moment in time, they got a chance. Mm -hmm. They got a chance. They got their engines are massive. These things so are. So you're beasts. saying there's a chance? Um, they're totally a chance. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so this, so the boat, this new, this new boat, the Miss England two. Uh huh. Is sent for for the trial run because now they're they're getting, not only have they challenged Garwood, but before they even get to Detroit, they want to break Garwood's record oh. before they even get to Detroit. The, right, the water speed record, the water speed record, which is at the this trifecta point, on the, yeah. which is at this point, it's ninety two point eight three six miles an hour. That's you know, the, that's Gar's uh, record. By, sounding by the size of that England too, they could stand a fair chance. Well, exactly. This thing is about to be. This is it definitely stands a fair chance. So they're like, so I don't think I like that. Yeah. So they want to. I don't think you know what country you're broadcasting. It, it reminds from. me of like the rock. You know, rock it was like, you, you you break my record. Now I break you. you know, like it's yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, He's like, yeah. we want to break Garwood's record, and yeah, then we yeah. want to break Garwood. Yeah. You know, like that's their that's their setup. <laughs> and so to do this, there's a lake in England which is called Lake Windermere, and it's the biggest lake in England. Right. And so they they bring the boat to Lake Windermere, and then now is so I'm going to read you the quote of the story of is them this, uh, taking this boat. Uh, to what's Lake, this from Speedboat Kings again? This is once yes, yeah, Speedboat Kings. Right, well, most enough. of the stuff I use is from Speedboat Kings yeah, yeah. because it's just such a phenomenal just, story. Yeah, hell yeah. So um, so here we okay. So you know um, how much that book is worth? It's like yeah. exactly what someone will pay for it. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly, exactly what somebody will be paying. There you for go. It. Anyway. Um, so that's so just a nod to Chris. Everything is a nod to Chris. Chris just got one yeah. in the mail today. He's like, yeah, Chris, Chris is a big fan of the show Chris and helping the, out with all kinds of graphics yeah, and stuff. Chris got Thank the, you, Chris. Yeah, Chris got the steel of the century. And he got, got for uh, like six bucks or six, something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's listed for it's eight. Zero. It's listed somewhere online for a couple places for, for eight, 800. Eight, I spent 800, 800. Back 10 years ago, I spent a, like 120 bucks on my copy. And uh, Chris found one for like seven bucks. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm like, I asked, like, is there any more? Is there any more copies? I was like, like yeah, I was, I was gonna start googling when I got to the studio. I forgot. I'm like, Tom, if there's any more in there, I'm gonna pick myself up a couple extra uh, copies. But man. anyway, all right. So this, uh, this, this quote about uh, Seagraves going, so they're for, going the for the record. Yeah, so we want to break Garwood's record. Where, what's the Windermere? Wind the wind what? So it's called Lake Windermere in Windermere. England. It's the biggest right. lake in England. They want to give it some some space, right? So, uh, so Miss England two was ready on Friday, June thirteenth, nineteen thirty. Seagrave, Michael Wilcox, engineer the boat, and W. Hallwell of the Rolls Royce Company, all dressed in spotless white overalls and special steel life belts, stepped into the cockpit. Seagrave turned to Wilcox and said, It's Friday the 13th. Yep. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> Two of them were going to their death. Oh. The boat shot out, shot out above the measured mile straight away where the official timers stood, ready to dash over the measured mile laid out in the center of the lake between Lakeside and Ambleside. Seagrave was making a few practice spins far out there above the markers. The Miss England too looked like a white ghost. Its wings of spray spread wide, its engines droning, a thing of beauty, symmetry, flawless grace. It was perhaps the most beautiful speedboat ever built, its bow and its aft end tapering almost to the thinness of a knife blade. It cut a great white arc in, in the water, then it straightened. Seagrave was cutting down towards the markers, his steady hand tight on the wheel, his eyes glued to the narrow glass flat path before him, his foot pressing the throttle to both engines. The engines cannoned louder as they approached the first marker. When he crossed, throttles down, the thing was like the mad screaming of 4,000 wounded war horses, agonized and frightened. 
Miss England two shot across the first mile at 96.41 miles per hour. Two runs must be made across the measured mile, one against the wind or current, one with. It came back at 101.11 miles an hour. Mm. The average was 98.76, a, a new world record. But this courageous young Briton did not know he had broken the world record. He was not satisfied. He took his craft to the upper end of the course again and brought it back with everything it had. The roar was terrific. The official timers could not clock at this time. It did not complete the mile. It made a sudden turn. The quivering thing shot clear out of the water like a white rocket. Its engines screaming. Seagrave and his two men were pitched like meteors from the cockpit. There was a puff of blue curling smoke, a dive, silence. Ten boats rushed to the rescue. Seagrave himself was picked up by P.F. King of Windermere, who plunged into the lake after him. He was unconscious. Hallwell drowned. Wilcox was severely injured. Seagrave and Wilcox were rushed to the hospital. Seagrave suffered a broken arm, a broken rib, a fractured thigh. He regained consciousness for a few minutes. He turned to Lady Seagrave at his bedside and asked, how, how are the lads, meaning his men? And then, did we do it? Lady Seagrave told me that he told him he had, then he, that he had broke the record. He died in a few moments of lung hemorrhages. The drowned body of Hallwell was found, a pencil clutched in one hand, a pad of paper in the other. He'd evidently been taking tachometer readings. Wilcox recovered. Probably no one will ever know for sure what sent these men to their death. It may have been the tremendous torque of the tiny propeller. 20 minutes after, after the disaster, a water-soaked branch of a tree, three inches thick, was picked up several hundred yards from the stern of the boat. That may be the answer. No one knows. Uh, so that's the end. So at the moment of his death, at the moment of Seagray's death, he is the first person ever to hold the world record for speed on water and land at yeah. the same time. So, so Seagrave, they broke the record at the sure. moment of, you know, at the moment of his death. He didn't Oof. even, at the time he, you know, at the time the boat exploded, he had no idea he was, you know, the record holder, but he, but he, when he died, he knew, you know I mean? His wife told him, yes, you did. You broke the record. And then he died like 20, what do you say? 20 minutes later. Uh, so this is, so you, you, this, this, this career, this guy, you know I mean? His life comes to an end. His career comes to an end. In the death of Seagrave was this is like a this is like a national tragedy. tragedy. Yeah, I mean this is a national tragedy. Like they they're all excitement building for this race. Um, everything you know they got the missing one too. It sets that's you know, like going to set the, the challenger record. blowing up. You know exactly. I mean, it's like it's 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 it's, it's, a, is, it's a shock. It's exactly. people are people are rooting, cheering, invested, watching. And you they know, love this guy. Joyous. World War One hero. He's all. I mean, he's a I, I, I totally hero. I compare that to the challenger going. You know, it's just everybody it's a, excited. That's, it's, that's that is the type of feeling that radiates through this country. And, and then, you've got this guy who is like your hero. Like the momentum oh, is building. And he could have he could have just went to the dock because he had the record. He had the record. Yeah, he didn't know. He didn't know. You know, and Man. so and so that's what I mean. So there's this they, there's this Paul. But these that, guys live it. That's what I mean. They, like, they this live is, it to the tenth. They exactly. You know? Yeah. So he's so he, this means so. There, you know, the momentum is building for this race between Seagrave and Garwood, and they're about, you know, they're breaking the record and they're getting ready to do this thing. And so, so what comes out of this, you know, of you know, of course, like I say, this national tragedy. Um, it, but at the same time, what comes out of this is the is that it's this sense of how you know, like using Seagrave's death, like we are not going to be denied this Harmsworth. Yeah. Seagrave died to get this Harmsworth trophy, to bring right. this trophy back to England. And so now what becomes of this, Lord Wake, you know, Lord Wakefield is determined. He'll, he'll spend his entire fortune on this if needs be. Sure. Um, the British public, this is not just a couple of random racing fans. The British public wants this championship for Seagrave. The British government is determined to get them this championship, you know, to get them this trophy. So, the, so that, so this is what comes out of the, you know, of Seagrave and his life. And this is that the, is the, is the, the, um, you know, the attention, the, 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 you know, the, 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 all of a sudden, the only thing that people have at this exact moment in time is a, is speedboat racing. Right. That's it. Yeah. There's no, I mean, there's, there's, there, this is now sure. now it's the it, this is an international competition of what it was originally sort sort of supposed to be, which is you've got the the British the entire British public is now wants this trophy they want it they got Rolls Royce they got the British Air Ministry 
They've got the richest people in England. They got everybody involved with this. And this has got to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And then over here in in America, you've got Garwood, the king, you know, the speedboat champion, the king, who is not going to go down easily. He's finally got the challenge he wants. And now the challenge is, you know, this is a unified effort by a lot of very powerful people that are that want this championship to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just a bunch of rich guys trying to fend off. Well, who's who's the next driver? That's what we're gonna find out in the next episode. Okay. Hey, it, but it, like I say, but but what, that's what, what is sort the, of what is the Seagrave trophy? Well, so I, I wanted I put that up there just to show like the kind of impact he had. Yeah. So there's actually a trophy called the Seagrave trophy. Okay. And um, they, so the trophy, it, the trophy, they his wife commissioned they commissioned it, but it's like there's actually like a royal charter. That's why I oh. included the picture. Right. We got a picture. Of this it's a really cool trophy. Sure. I mean, this thing is like super cool. It's almost like Liberty or like Britannia, like the yeah. you know, the, the goddess Lady of the waves. Justice. Yeah, well, just I something think, very I think, I think stirring like that. Yeah, I think it's Britannia because like Britannia is like this. You know, like in, in instead of like lady, you know, like we have Lady Liberty sure. over in England, they have Britannia, who's okay. like the, the mistress, you know, like the, the god of like the waves. You right, know, right. I mean, that's they have Britannia, the goddess of Britain type of thing. Okay, that's their sort of Lady Liberty, and so I think that's Britannia. And then they have this huge charter, which is like this is like the description of who gets to win this this trophy. And it's basically, I, I there's a ton of details about it, but the general idea is is it go every year it gets awarded to somebody who does something extraordinary in the realm of um like speed and mechanics and like air like flying okay. airplanes or okay. boats or it can be sort of around it's not things, limited to mechanical like engineering or yeah. anything like because he was all over the place he was the trifecta exactly was, yeah yeah so there's people there's like it was awarded to men and women like, okay. where there was like nice. there's like Good. people like you know people that like you know like the, doing like the kind of charles Lindbergh thing where they're flying like first person to fly straight to South Africa, the first British person to like make it okay. from England to South Africa by plane like innovators, won the war. And- innovators. And exactly. So every year it's been, I think it's been awarded every single year, but it didn't necessarily have to get awarded. Like unless sure. it had to be something, it wasn't just like a participation trophy. They, nobody really did anything special this year. They were always looking for something that was, you know, ex- was unique and, ex- you know, you know, trying to push extraordinary. So, yeah. so it was actually a sea grave trophy, um, which I'm not really sure how much attention it gets anymore, but, um, but it's just that's like I say. This is one of the reasons the I want to do the, the this episode. The Seagrave behind it is just yeah. moving. Yeah. So. so that's but that's what I'm saying. Like that's why one of the reasons why I love doing this show is we got to, you know like this to focus on this guy. Which who talks about this guy? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's and he, this guy lived this incredible life story, and you know even in his death, as we're gonna see going forward, you know the 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 the. the 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 focus uh, i mean speed boat racing for the next couple three years here is going to be the only thing that matters right like this what year are we in right here right so this is so seagrave dies in 1930 okay wow okay so closing yeah. in on yeah so we're moving it so now yeah so it's the, so i don't think so they didn't race the so they didn't race in 19 so the harmsworth was it was not happening in 1930 but right. in 31 they're going to be coming back all right so like going forward you know, 30, you know, so the going forward now is when we're going to really start seeing like when you've got the entire, every single person, you know, like the, the, the biggest companies, the biggest financiers, the bit, you know, the, you know, the British public, you've got everybody behind this. That's when you're going to start to see, you know, the challenge is that people's boats aren't going to be breaking down in the middle of the second lap yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like this is the, these boat, they're coming for real now and they're coming wow. for the Garwood's trophy. And that's what's going to be so astonishing about the story going forward is is what Garwood has to do to defend that to Harmsworth. defend this Harmsworth against yeah. this the biggest. I mean, he wants shot. I'm going to end up with this. He wants competition. He's about to get it. Okay, in a big time way. All right. And uh, so we're up to the uh, Miss America seven and eight. He's at the eight. Yep. Yeah. So there's two more levels to go. All <laughs> right. You know, Miss America ten is the next level, but. Is the uh, highest form. So, but he's at the eight right now. And, um, but, he, but the, as we've seen, the Miss America, the Miss England two, they got these engines that are, that are ripping 2000 horsepower and they got two of them that are doing 2000 horsepower a piece. Uh, so, Garwood's got to come up with something pretty special to start matching this because right. this, I don't, I, I don't even know what the specs were for the eight off the time I had, but I don't think the eight's going to cut it. We'll sure. see. But uh, I don't I don't think the eight's going to cut it. <laughs> Garwood's got to take Even with, the, take even it with the magic man behind the wheel. Yeah. he's yeah, it, yeah. It's not even about the driving. The engineering is what key yeah. the power, you know, the the, yeah. the the boat, the weight and all this. 
you got, you know, they got the Miss England two coming over. That's got these new Rolls Royce, two thousand pound, you know, horsepower engines. In. All right, if you want to find out if Garwood is gonna do it, you gotta like, subscribe, uh, collect, uh, pick it up and put it in a basket, whatever it is uh, on the uh, podcast experience. Like, thumbs uh, up, do your thing. Help yeah, us yeah. Out. share share it with a friend. Tell a couple people about the podcast. We appreciate that, and uh, tweet it, comment on it. Those are all great things. So. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, thanks to Chris for uh, Chris is doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We love Chris, the man. Chris so, is the man, dude. Uh, so other people saying hi while we're on the uh, air there. Uh, C- Catherine, you, my sister, sister we said, love hey. Catherine, of so, course. Thanks, Catherine, and uh, everybody who's been uh, popping in and, and listening. We appreciate you, and uh, we'll do it again next time. It's uh, Detroit City of Champions podcast.